Images are everywhere, and they enhance our websites in extraordinary ways. Can you imagine a web without images? It would not nearly be as compelling as it is. We have quite a few considerations to take into account when we deal with images. Let's look at how we can address images and ensure that they work as they should. The flexible images, also called adaptive images, respond to different viewport sizes and display resolutions. It seeks to overcome two problems facing visual elements in the age of mobile development. We'll be looking at several techniques and how we can control how images appear within our web page. We'll start off by looking at how we can make background images responsive. Here I have a header with an H1, and as you can see, there is an image displaying. The image is a result of some CSS that I've added. So as you can see, I'm loading a background image I'm centering it, I'm using cover and no repeat. If I resize my browser window, you will see that the image is simply going to resize within the confines of the browser window. Currently, I'm using a large image. This image happens to be 1200 pixels wide. It looks fine when the page is large or small. The issue is going to be when the page is small, like on a mobile device, I'm loading a bunch of file size that I don't really need. My image does not need to be this large. A better alternative would be to load a smaller version of the image. Now I've gone ahead and written small here so we can see the difference. This is the same image. I've just scaled it down in my image editing program. Its width is 600 pixels. So at the small screen, it looks fine. It looks pretty much the same. But as I make my page larger, you can see that the quality of the image will start to deteriorate as the page gets wider. And that's because it is stretching my image. When we do this, we will have deterioration. And perhaps for background images, this isn't super critical, but if it is something that you're worried about, you'll wanna serve up different images based on the screen size. We can do that thanks to media queries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the small image first. The reason that we load the small image first is because we always want to be working in the mobile first approach, which means that we are going to serve up all of the CSS that we need for the small screen. Then we'll make a media query or a condition that is going to alter what happens on the screen when the screen is larger. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to specify that my screen change once it gets larger than 600 pixels. And then all we're going to do here is we're going to just swap out this header image. So I'm going to grab the header declaration along with the background rule that we specified, and I'm simply going to change the image to large. Now, I really don't need to repeat all of this information since it is going to inherit from the original rule. However, I will need to change my declaration to be a background dash image. If I remove the other code and just use the shorthand of background, then it won't inherit the rest of the code we have here. But if we do this, when we refresh the page, you can see that it's already showing the large version of the image. That's because my page is larger than 600 pixels. As I scale my page down, as soon as it gets smaller than 600 pixels, the image will swap out and show the small version of the image. You can do this as many times as you need to, and there's no need to really get carried away. You probably only need to make maybe one or two versions of an image and then swap them out when you're using the background image. That takes care of how we can deal with images in a responsive way when they're background images. But what about when we have images that are appearing on the page? Well, we have a couple of different options that we can do. Let's take a look. I'm going to go into my HTML and I have some code that I've commented out. If I go ahead and uncomment out this first block of code, you can see that I have an H2, I have a figure element with an image and a fig caption. If we save the page and we refresh, you'll see that I have an image that is being displayed on my page. Now, if I resize my page, you will notice that this image is going to scale up or down depending on the size of the page. The reason that it's scaling is because I already have the CSS that basically makes the image responsive. 
If we go into the CSS file, I have some rules for my image element. I'm setting the max width to 100% and the height to auto. Let me just comment this out for a moment and let's see what our page looks like without this bit of code. If we refresh the page now, you're going to see that I have horizontal scroll bars. The image will not appear on the page in its entirety unless the page is wide enough to support this 1200 pixel wide image. So when the page is more narrow, I will get horizontal scroll bars. When we build websites, we want to avoid horizontal scrolling at all costs. It is not a good user experience to have to scroll vertically and horizontally. Also, my image is way too big for what I need. So we're going to resolve this by simply making a CSS rule for all images, setting the maximum width to 100% and setting the height to auto. By setting the maximum width to 100%, that basically is telling the browser, don't make the image more than its default 100% view. So if I scale my page way up, you can see that the image does not continue to grow it maxes out at its original 100% size. But if I size my page down, the image will scale down. Now this does work pretty well. The only problem is that I'm loading a bunch of file size that I don't necessarily need at these smaller screen sizes. Ideally, I would like to be able to serve up a smaller version of the image at the small screen size and then only serve up the large version of the image when necessary. In order to do this, we're actually going to change some HTML. The reason why this is a problem is because a big high resolution image contains millions of pixels. All of that data can make the file size fairly large. This is going to take time to download, especially on a slow network connection, and it can use people's data plans on mobile devices. We don't want to deliver unneeded high resolution data to small screen devices. We can resolve this by serving up the right image for the right device. Let's look at a couple of techniques that we can do to accomplish this. I'm going to go back to my HTML. We're going to uncomment out the next two blocks of code. They are using almost identical code and I'll just explain both of them together. As you can see, both images are wrapped in a figure tag, and then I have the fig caption. Inside the image tag, we do have some new and additional code. We always start off with the default source attribute. This will ensure that browsers that do not support the source set attribute will serve up some version of the image. All new browsers do support source set, so we will go ahead and serve these up second. The source set attribute allows you to specify multiple image sizes in a single value. We can make several different files and list them as a set of options in our HTML. And then we let the browser decide which image to download. There will be images that the browser or device will have access to under certain circumstances. Those circumstances have to do with two different things, resolution and viewport size. These days, more and more screens are not simply one X. We have retina screens, high density, super retina. Basically, there are a bunch of screens out there with a pixel density that is 2X, 3X, 4X, situations where more data can be displayed by the screen. The simplest way to support these different screen sizes is to create multiple copies of our image and use different resolutions. We're telling the browser that these copies are available in this particular situation. The device can then decide what it wants to do. So in this situation, the browser is gonna look at screen density, the network connection, and the user's settings, and decide which image to use. You simply string together multiple choices separated by a comma, like I have here. Once you've specified the image that you want to serve and the resolution, you'll use a comma, and then you can add as many different options as you need to. This will take care of the resolution, but many times we're going to want to handle different images based on layout. I find this to be more commonly used. In that case, we'll use the same sort of formatting, but after we have the image within the source set attribute, we're going to specify a size. In this case, the browser is going to consider the width of the viewport 
and choose a file based on the size of the screen. In addition to what we have here, we're going to also pass in the size parameter. This parameter will help ensure that the browser understands the sizes that we're using. I'm going to go into the second example, and after my source set, I'm going to add an additional attribute of sizes. Inside the size attribute, I'm going to pass on some conditions. These look a lot like media queries. As you can see, I'm specifying when the max width is set to 480 pixels. Then I want my image to be 240 pixels. When the max width is 800 or less, it'll be 480. And when it's 1200 or less, it'll be 800. We can change these numbers around, but these are the numbers I'm using for this example. If we save and we refresh the page in the browser, you will see that now we have two more instances of our image. The images are all showing the 1200 pixel version of the image, and that's because the first image that we are displaying is becoming cached and it's sending that image into these other areas as well. This is the result of us using the exact same image. So in order for me to show you how our source set is working, I'll need to comment out the first instance of my image. I'm going to resave the page. And now if I refresh, we just have the two instances of the image using source set. Now they are still displaying the largest version of the image. And again, that's because the image is still cached. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my developer tools. Once the developer tools are open, I'm going to come down here to the toggle device toolbar icon. When I click this, the browser will mimic how the page will look on a variety of devices. You can choose a whole plethora of different devices that you want to mimic. Or in my case, I'm simply using responsive, which will allow me to resize the page to be any sort of size. We'll go ahead and we'll leave the page around 400 pixels. In order to refresh and display the images correctly, I'm gonna to come to the reload page icon. And if I hold down and select empty cache and hard reload, it'll force the page to completely reload. At this point, you can see how the image has swapped out on the top. The bottom one is already showing our 480 instance. So in both cases, because of the dimensions of the screen size, and the settings that we used, the smaller image is being loaded. As I resize my page, the image will eventually swap out in the case of the second source set example. And then in order to see what's really happening with the first one, we'll need to come up here and do an empty cache and hard reload. And you can see how now the 800 width version of the image is displaying in both cases. If I continue to resize my screen and I come above the criteria that we've specified, so in this case 800, the bottom image is going to switch out to the 1200 wide version of the image. And if I do an empty cache and hard reload, the upper image will also display the 1200 wide version of the image. Normally, a person is going to be looking at a web page through one screen. The viewport is going to stay at one size and they will simply be served up one instance of the image. It's not going to continually be resizing and forcing them to load different versions of the image. If we code up our page correctly, then the viewer is going to get the image that's best for them. None of the rest of the files are going to be downloaded, which is the whole point to save on download and file size. The source set attribute gives you two options for communicating to the browser that there are a set of images available to use. You can specify which images are for which resolution of screen, or you can indicate which image has how many pixels and let the browser choose an image based on the combination of screen density and viewport width. The sizes attribute gives you a way to specify for the browser how much the viewport's width that image will take up and at which breakpoint. In every case, you're giving the browser information in the HTML so that it can decide intelligently which image files to download, especially considering the network conditions and the user preferences. Let's move on and look at one more example that we can do in regards to images. I'm going to go into my code 
and I'll uncomment out this last block of code. This is using the picture element. If we want to do more than swap out low files for high files, if we want to use a different image on a small screen versus a big screen, maybe we want the image to be tall and narrow on mobile where it's short and wide on desktops, or we might even want to completely use another image altogether. So in this example, I've prepared a new image called Shark 480 Crop. This is the same image, but I've cropped it down for small screen use. Let's take a look. If we save the HTML and go ahead and refresh our page, you will see that the bottom instance of my shark image is a more cropped image. It's cropped tighter around the shark. It's basically eliminating this portion of the page at the small screen. As long as our screen is underneath a minimum width of 800 pixels, it's going to show this cropped version of the image. As my page gets larger, you will see that eventually, once my page is wider than 800 pixels, the image is going to swap out and show me the 800 version of the image. That's the same instance that we were using above. And finally, if my page is really wide, it will use the 1200 version of the image. The picture element is a little bit more straightforward to use rather than the source set method. This is supported in all modern browsers, and this is awesome because it allows you to not only serve up different instances of the image, but also different versions of the image, depending on the optimal way to display that image. All of these methods allow you to ensure that your user is getting the best sized image for their experience. Now I know it seems like a lot of work, and what I recommend is you don't do the source set or the picture version until you've completely developed your website. I generally just develop my websites using the CSS of image max width 100% and height auto so that my images are responsive and they resize. Once I have my website completely dialed in, then I'll go back and I'll prepare the additional images and add them into the HTML so that my website is going to be serving the user up with the image that they need.